pirates still haunt the waters off St. Augustine, Florida, the oldest city in America, founded four and a half centuries ago. Today, families are treated to a first-hand pirate encounter aboard the Black Raven, a real-life pirate ship that plies the harbor of the first city. Fire the cannon! I'm taking her! The Black Raven sails daily from the St. Augustine Municipal Marina. On board, a motley crew of characters enthralls passengers young and old. Most of the kids that come on here, they love it. They want to be a pirate for a day. Um, and that's really what we try to give them, you know, allow them to become a pirate and a part of the Black Raven crew for a day. Kids really enjoy the sword fighting. They really enjoy the face painting. Um, they enjoy, you know, the whole battle thing. On this particular cruise, the Black Raven is attacked by the nastiest of pirates, Blackbeard and Captain Hook, who come alongside in a smaller vessel and take the Black Raven's treasure chest. Um, Ray Beard was going around in circles around us and then we kept on shooting bombs and they kept on shooting bombs and then they made a deal to um, give a bottle of rum for a treasure chest. I thought it was awesome. Um, we celebrated an eighth birthday for my son today and he just really enjoyed the songs and the sword fighting and um, kind of negotiating over rum and, and treasure. <laughs> Just up the street from the Black Raven's lair, visitors to the first city will find the fabulous St. Augustine Pirate and Treasure Museum. The museum boasts the largest assemblage of authentic pirate items ever displayed under one roof, including one of only three remaining real Jolly Roger pirate flags and the only authentic pirate treasure chest known to exist today. All are exhibited in realistic pirate realms that transport visitors back to the past. When people walk into the museum, we want them to be completely immersed in the environment that we created. If you're in Port Royal, Jamaica, which is our first, the first area that you enter, we want you to feel like you're literally on the streets of Port Royal, Jamaica. And then when you step into Rogue's Tavern, it's like being in a pirate's tavern. We have a touchscreen book of pirates that's also interactive. And it's literally like a book, and you just touch it, and it flips through and um, it'll take you through different pirates from the Golden Age who were very notorious. You come in and you read and you learn, but you also touch and you see and you feel and you find. So it's, it's more of like a journey than just walking through a museum. In a city as old as St. Augustine, it's not surprising pirates have called here more than once over the centuries. St. Augustine's history was influenced by piracy. The first pirate attack on St. Augustine came just over 20 years after the city was founded. The perpetrator, Englishman Francis Drake, is not a figure we normally associate with piracy. When we think of Francis Drake, we always think of him as Sir Francis Drake, but the Spanish considered Drake a pirate. Drake came on the tail end of a rampage through Spain's colonial outposts. St. Augustine's turn came in May of 1586, and the destruction that ensued very nearly shut down the Spanish town forever. Drake comes to town with an armada of about 2,000 men, packed aboard 23 ships. And he just torched the town, burned the orchards. He essentially lays waste to the town. And uh, what he doesn't carry off, he destroys in some fashion. It was a pivotal event for St. Augustine. All the evidence of this important chapter in St. Augustine's history vanished for more than four centuries. We have plenty of historical evidence for Drake's activities. However, we never really found any archeological signature for that particular singular event. In 1998, city archaeologist Carl Halbert made a startling discovery at the site where the St. Augustine Art Association was building a new wing. As soon as we came down on top of the black soil and we started seeing pottery fragments in it, we knew we had something special. And lo and behold, he made this 
unprecedented discovery of 16th century artifacts that he was able to date to Sir Francis Drake's 1586 raid on St. Augustine when he burned the town down. The artifacts went into storage in Halbert's lab for 12 years until a new opportunity arose to bring them in front of the public. And he laid them out on the kitchen table and said, this is what we found underneath your gallery. And we said, wow, this is a treasure trove. The resulting exhibit, which is free and open to the public, combines art and artifacts in an inventive way. The first thing that sets the exhibit apart is the spot where it stands. The unique aspect of this exhibit is that it is in place right where the artifacts were found, and that's very rare. Um, so when you stand facing this exhibit, you are standing on historical turf, so to speak. So three feet under the floor is where Carl discovered this find. The exhibit includes a portrait of Drake drawn with charcoal from the flames of his raid, and a quilt depicting what the archaeologist found. Actual artifacts are sewn into the fabric, and visitors are invited to touch them and make a personal connection with the past. We're very proud of this. Uh, we worked very hard. We had a very creative, collaborative team that put this together. Is this the end of the story, or will more traces be found of this brutal episode in St. Augustine's history? Halbert says, odds are, Francis Drake will one day make another appearance in America's oldest city. I think that, you know, anytime you go, you put a shovel to the ground, you have the possibility of finding something related to Drake's raid. Reform your ranks and fire! The next big pirate attack came at the hands of an English buccaneer named Robert Searles. His 1668 attack on the city is now reenacted in St. Augustine every March. Robert Searles comes to St. Augustine almost by accident. He is sailing off the coast of Cuba in 1668, waiting for a silver ship, one of the big silver galleons, and he misses it somehow. It doesn't come, and it doesn't come, and so finally his men are getting very restless. They want a payday. So Cyril's is looking for an easy target. And St. Augustine was well known to the English by this point, and it probably looked like a very easy target because it was a very small, poorly armed garrison town. When Cyril's men stormed ashore in the dead of night, the Spanish city was caught completely unaware. The attack itself is incredibly violent and ruthless. There are stories about uh, pirates shooting small children in the street. Over the course of the evening, the pirates sack the city. They take a grand total of 70 hostages. Help, help us, help us. They steal all of the silver from the treasury. Not only do they steal the canvas in the warehouse, they go to all of the ships that are in the harbor in St. Augustine and steal all of their sails. This will become important later because it means the people of St. Augustine can't get the word out to ask for help because they're literally trapped in their city. This humiliating disaster, coupled with the bitter memories of Francis Drake's raid eight decades earlier, prompted the creation of one of St. Augustine's most famous landmarks. The most concrete uh, evidence of the Cyril's attack is the construction of the Castillo de San Marcos, which is the stone fort that still stands here in St. Augustine. There were several major attacks over the next century that the English launched against St. Augustine and the fort was instrumental, uh, vital in maintaining Spanish control of the province. 